doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor. We believe climate change is the greatest investment opportunity of our generation. That's why the African Green Infrastructure Investment Bank, AFGIV, is investing for generational climate returns. Join Africa's Green Investment Bank and its partners for action on the just transition and emissions reduction targets in Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt, for an epic 2022 African COP27. The African Green Infrastructure Investment Bank, AFGIV, committing capital to a climate-safe future. So I'm now going to turn to uh, Ziad, um, you know, f who, who represents the World Association of uh, Public Private, uh, excuse me, um, PPP units, um, just to really give us his views um, on, the, on, on, on the bankable pipeline and what governments and PPP units can do. Um, and, 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 and he'll also just sort of share some of his priorities that he'd like to see, as you have uh, shared also, John, um, from, from, from governments and ministers of finance to support institutional investor public partnerships that support the African continental free trade area. Over to you, Zed. Thank you very much, Hubert. Um, I don't know if you can hear me, if you can see me. I, um, I can see you very well, but uh, you, you sound very faint. I'm not sure if that's... Um, I don't know. Can you see me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, much clearer. Thank you. Um, I don't see myself on the screen, but I trust okay, that... We see you very clearly. <laughs> all right. Very good. Thank you very much, and uh, congratulations to you on all the hard work that you're doing to uh, make uh, all this effort come to fruition uh, through this uh, meeting today and... And you know, in, I'm, over the next year, uh, all the uh, all the plans that you have. Um, look, um, African economies are growing very rapidly. We all know that. Uh, so we know that investors are missing out on opportunities when they are not involved in that growth. But they are not. Institutional investors are largely not. And African governments are still relying mostly on donations to fund infrastructure and sometimes even on China. Um, and really, uh, the, re the remaining part is, is picked up by the multilateral development banks. So when, when African governments are thinking about, I have this project I need to finance, these are the people they think about. They're not thinking about institutional investors. They're not thinking about capital markets. Um, so it's a, it's a two-way street. In the institutional investors are not thinking about Africa, and African governments are not thinking about institutional investors because they think it's a lost cause. Nobody's going to be interested in what they have. Interestingly, a gentleman by the name of Henry Helmy has written a paper at the Sorbonne University uh, that looked at um, what, you know, how uh, the investor uh, field uh, looks like and, and what the MDBs uh, can do. And Interestingly, the multilateral development banks, when they're involved in infrastructure projects, they do crowd in institutional funding, but only when that institutional funding is coming from uh, investors in developed economies. When we look at investors from, uh, from developing economies, such as some of the, uh, the, uh, the sovereign wealth funds or, or the local investors, etc., when they're looking at Investors from uh, developing countries, uh, the multilateral development bank's involvement does not actually either has a no effect or in the case of uh, direct institutional investors, i.e. the pension funds, the, the sovereign wealth funds, and the uh, insurance companies, it's, it crowds them out. Um, so everybody has to pay attention to what is going on. The multilateral development banks need to be very conscious of how their involvement may be crowding out some of the investors that are most needed to invest in infrastructure in Africa. Um, uh, in, international investors need to pay more attention to Africa and governments. And I get to governments. Now, um, what should governments do? Well, first, uh, if you look around Africa, and we're here talking about public-private partnerships because at the end of the day, this is, the, the, this is what, what's important. We know that whatever government, uh, government financing there is, 
uh, they are going to deploy it, but it is never going to be enough. Nor is uh, investment from multilateral development banks enough to accompany the huge investment in infrastructure, green or otherwise, that is needed in Africa. So we're looking at private, private investors. And um, through the uh, international community, multilateral development banks, help, etc., every country in Africa today, uh, almost every country has a, a, a PPP unit. And, and these units working with line ministries are supposed to deliver PPP projects. But they are not, develop, they are not um, developing PPP, PPP projects. And there are very few projects actually on offer. There's a lot of talk about pipelines. And, and here maybe this is part of the answer to uh, John Denton's uh, remark. I don't know that it is uh, fully the, the answer. But, you know, the problem is that many institutional investors cannot find projects to invest in. Why is that? Even though, you know, there's a lot of money going into capacity building in the PPP units. Um, the answer is, uh, while we're training a lot of mid to low level government uh, staff in PPP, the politicians are still largely unaware of what PPP is, how it works, what needs to be done to create PPP projects. And um, they typically want an airport and they want it built in six months. And this is not going to happen. And they get frustrated with the process and they say they fired the head of the PPP unit because they say it's not working. Uh, it's not true. It's just there's a lot of awareness that needs to be built among politicians. This is part of what we do at WAP. Uh, we have not been doing enough. Obviously, we need to do more. Uh, the second uh, thing is that PPP units are not working in tandem with FDI promotion agencies. So the FDI promotion agency is, is on one planet and the PPP unit with this infrastructure projects is on another. Thirdly, um, there's, they don't have enough funding to prepare the projects. So when a project is not well prepared, investors are not really interested in it. And by uh, preparing good projects uh, today, there's a lot more than just doing a value for money analysis. Uh, they need to actually do a lot of the due diligence, legal or otherwise, that is needed. They do need to spend time on looking at uh, environmental and social impact. Because if they get um, their projects rated, not only for credit, but for ESG, and there are many rating agencies today that rate ESG, if they get them rated, they will have access to a much wider international market uh, and that's not happening today. Uh, another thing is working with investment banks. So when governments work with the multilateral development banks and their arms, um, they are, you know, many times missing out on a lot of the creativity that comes from, uh, from investment banks. My experience uh, through the 1980s and 90s working in Latin America, even when Latin America was facing many of the credit problems, um, we were able to come up with very interesting finance and financial structures and innovative financing that is dearly missing today, not only in Africa, but in most of the developing countries. Somehow or the other, uh, there's been a pause to creative uh, financial structuring, um, you know, and, and a reliance on, on, on just direct lending. Uh, so um, hopefully that when, when the involvement of investment banks with uh, capital markets, granted that sometimes the risk needs to be uh, tranched, um, the tranche that goes to, to such investors is different from the tranche that might be taken on by a multilateral development bank. Uh, one simple example, but of course this is, uh, this is not what I'm talking about, but, but it's like loan A and loan B of the IFC you can tranche the credit uh, into various segments. Um, I'd like uh, to say that uh, one area that is overlooked is agriculture. Um, there is a huge potential for PPP in agriculture in Africa. Africa has a lot of very, very um, fertile land. Uh, many, much of it is uh, owned by governments or controlled by governments. It can be offered for, for PPP projects. Um, this is this is green. Um, it is uh, 
uh, what it needs is infrastructure. So they can, we should think of infrastructure not only as infrastructure for uh, communities, but we need to think of infrastructure and logistics for agriculture and, and solar energy. And, and uh, you know, using uh, solar energy is, is excellent for, for irrigation and other matters. So um, I, I encourage uh, African governments to look very, very seriously at infrastructure. One last word about WAP. Uh, we are a asso uh, global association. We have 39 governments today as members, and we have other members that are corporate or institutional um, and, and, and individual. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, strategic partnerships with many of the global entities, uh, UN entities and, and other entities. And um, I urge everybody that's interested in PPP to consider joining WAP. It's, um, it's a hub for, intera for interacting, exchanging information and experience. And we have actually been working on a model law with, with the UN and now with the World Bank. The World Bank is developing its own model law. So I think there's going to be very interesting uh, developments when we share all these experiences together. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, Hubert, to talk to you today. We believe climate change is the greatest investment opportunity of our generation. That's why the African Green Infrastructure Investment Bank, AFGIB, is investing for generational climate returns. Join Africa's Green Investment Bank and its partners for action on the just transition and emissions reduction targets in Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt, for an epic 2022 African COP27. The African Green Infrastructure Investment Bank, AFGIB, committing capital to a climate safe future. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa.